All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to my studio. Welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Natifa and I am thrilled to be joining you all today. First of all, I just wanna say thank you for those of you guys who've been watching my videos and kind of, you know, just really engaging and stuff. And I'm glad that you guys are finding it useful. So um, yeah, so thank you all for that. It really means a lot to me. But today I wanted just to pop in and just talk about some of the products that I think Tim Holtz carries that are underrated. I think we all know he has, you know, a lot of products and we love them all, <laughs> but I think there are certain ones that I don't really see people utilizing a whole lot, or if they are utilizing them, um, maybe they're not sharing it as much, but there are, these are the things that I think that if I was kind of like starting my own like studio and I was focused on, you know, really building a studio around my love for Tim Holtz products, these are the things that I would recommend to people, um, kind of out the gate and, I'm going to talk about why, but these are the most underrated products that I think he carries. This is just the first set. Um, there's five here. I have some more and I will go into that. I'll probably do another video on, you know, another five that I have already, but I want to talk about these five today. So, um, if you're interested in learning what I think the most underrated, underrated products are that he carries right now, um, stay tuned. Okay, so up first, one of the products that I think is the most underrated product that Tim Holtz carries is the Distress Mixed Media Heavy Sock Paper. This is the one that is a little bit, looks like a manila folder. Um, and the other ones are like white and craft paper. Now I will say that I love me some craft paper, Distress Craft Paper, I love it. I think it's, it just, it, work, it works really well with oxides and it's just beautiful, but I think this paper is underrated. It, it is. I 100% believe it's underrated. And I don't know if people have played with it and have seen the differences that it, it, it has when it comes to using inks and oxides on it. But I have seen a huge difference in the papers. And I think this paper does not get enough credit or is not talked about a lot. And it's underrated. So let me show you what I mean. So anyway, but before I do that, this is the paper here. This just makes media heavy stock. Um, this one, it comes in a 10 pack. I don't know if they sell this, if they sell like, you know, multiples or like a bulk order of it. But I think the more that I think about it, I might want to actually invest in that because I'm finding that I really like this paper, I think as well as the the craft, um, distressed craft heavy stock paper. So this is what it is. It's from Ranger and oops excuse me. Um, and I am not getting any kind of like, you know, this is not sponsor post. I'm just telling you guys what I, what I have found. So this is what it is. Okay. Let me show you why. So this is a, um, a background that I did kind of like fallish colors. Let me darken this a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing here. These are fallish colors that I, I did, you know, and this is on this paper. And I just love the way that the inks play on it. So, um, and then this one, same colors, but this one is the Distress Mixed Media, I think. Hold on a second. This is the white one. It's in white. Let me grab the other one so you guys can see it. Okay, so this is the Distress White Heavy Stock. It's this one, right? And I think this paper, this paper is heavyweight and I think it might be really great for like stamping. I don't use this paper a lot because I use a lot of inks and stuff on my, for my work when I'm doing like a lot of inky stuff and I need papers that are going to like be able to handle that, right? So I typically use watercolor paper, but this paper I have found if you're more into like, if you want a smooth surface on your paper, this is the route to go because for some reason, this one, the ink sits on top of the paper. I don't know why. Maybe they have some kind of chemistry. I'm sure there's some kind of chemical chemistry reason why. But what I have found in making stuff is that when it comes to like working with inks and oxides for me on these papers and when I'm doing my work, what I have found to be like, and this is a little secret, the secret is that you, if your inks can stay on top of the paper for a little bit and play with each other, that's how you really start to get these like really amazing 
um, like interwoven deliciousness that we all love, right? But if it if the if the ink just sort of like is absorbed immediately, and that that may be what you're going for, then sometimes that doesn't really happen for you. So I can do a quick demo really quickly so you guys can see what I mean. But the distress makes me to heavy stock paper. The inks sit on top of the paper. And so you can you can add like water and all the other things onto it a little bit. Um, you have more playing time. Whereas with this one, it automatically gets absorbed into the into your paper, which if that's what you're going for, then fine. I like my inks to play with each other a lot. So that's why I think this is an underrated product that Tim carries. Okay, so let's do a quick demo so I can show you what I'm talking about. On the left side is the Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock Paper. On the right side is the Distress White Heavy Stock. Okay, so I'm gonna do um, Spice Marmalade Distress Spray Stain. And I'm gonna do um, that with like, maybe I'll do Carved Pumpkin. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the side by side. So hopefully you guys can see this well. Maybe I'll come down a little bit. So what you're watching for is to see how this this how the ink sits on this paper versus this paper. Okay. All right, do you see how quickly this one is absorbed by this paper versus this one? This one is still wet and this one is dry. So what I'm saying then um, is that when you spray this on this one versus that, these are still playing together, whereas these are already dry. And again, this is fine if that's what you're going for. When I'm making stuff, I'm going for this, this side. That's what I want. I want them to play together because on this side, you can add like your water and everything else to it, right? You can still add water to it and it's still gonna do what it's gonna do and it's still gonna oxidize and everything else, right? But on this side, it's gonna start moving around more and I'm my ink's moving still. I'm, my ink's not moving on this side at all. Do you see that? So that's why I think this is an underrated paper. And I don't know if people know about this, but I just, I think it's such like, and you can add more colors to this. You can start adding more colors to it and it's gonna start like playing with your stuff too. Like that's just how, you do it like it's gonna like this you can you know you have to be really quick with this it's gonna it can still do the drippy things but it's not as playful this is still wet it's still playing do you see that so for me I think it's an underrated paper and I I I think this is this is a secret sauce paper y'all I'm just saying Nothing against this one. This one is fine for if that's if that's your jam. Some people love this paper, but I think if you're more into like wanting the inks to play together and just do what they're gonna do, this um, this paper here is it's kind of delicious because it's still playing. Look at that, it's still playing. This one's dry and it's still playing. So that's why I think this paper is underrated. All right, all right. Okay, the next item that I think. Um, is underrated that Tim carries our backdrops you guys this is the Halloween version for this year but backdrops I'm telling you guys backdrops are underrated I don't think people understand the value we have in this I mean it's, it's scrapbook paper but it's cut down to six by ten and I just think I think backdrops are so like underutilized in ways that I think could really help people's you know, people elevate their work to where it's a little bit different than what they normally see. And I just don't think they utilize their backdrops enough. I think backdrops are amazing and I love using them. I think, you know, I use them as like cards, you know, they're double-sided. I don't like that part because it's hard to choose sometimes, <laughs> but I just buy two packs just out the gate. I'm going to get a two pack of backdrops every time it comes out. I don't care. I'm whatever. I'm getting two packs. But I think, you know, this is an easy way to like just start a card, you know, or a portfolio or a folio, whatever you want to call them. But I think that the, the most, I think the most beautiful thing about this um, is that it already has like images that you can use that you don't have to worry about a background. 
you know, let's say you're working on something like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Just throw in a backdrop, you all. Like, this is so underrated. I don't think it's necessarily just for the panels or all the things, like the 3D things that, you know, a lot of our the makers make. I am not one of those makers who makes like a lot of like 3Ds or, you know, vignettes. I don't do a lot of vignettes. I do like few, but not a lot. And I know that these are, you know, they fit a lot of those, um, the trays and everything else, but I think they're underrated because people just look at them that way. And I think that you can utilize them in different ways, right? These can be cut down to, you know, the stamp on, you can stamp on these. And I'm going to do a video on just how you can utilize backdrops in a, you know, in a different ways or whatever. But I think that the best way is to like, you can fold these suckers in half and you have a card base already. Like, <laughs> it's already like done for you. You know, I've done these where I've done like, you know, a folio, like, you know, folded this way. Um, if you look on my Instagram, you can see some of them, but I just think these are so underutilized. You can cut these down, put them into journals, all kinds of things you can do with these. And I just think that people just miss an opportunity to use backdrops. Like it's just, it's, it's like, already like just given to us and I don't think people utilize them so let's say you're making something I'm gonna grab one of my portraits that I've been working on let's see this one if this one will work I'm gonna use one that is smaller so let's say I've, I'm working on a portrait right and I'm like ooh, I want to create a card to send to somebody and I've made a portrait so let's say this is the portrait that I made I've been working on a portrait series and let's say I made this portrait and I'm like, okay, now I want to send this to somebody. What if I just took a backdrop and folded it in half? I'm not going to fold this because I don't, I, I want to use it or something else, but putting this on here like this, instant, like instant backdrop, right? That's why it's called backdrop, instant backdrop, background. Or if I were to go the other way and, and, you know, utilize that, I think these are so underrated. I don't think people understand the value that we have by just having these. So um, my second pick for underrated products that, you know, Tim offers to us is backdrops because they're amazing. I think they're amazing. So here's another example. All right. So backdrops are number two. And again, I will do a video on how you can really utilize your backdrops um, in cool ways. So that's my second pick, backdrops. Okay, the third product that I think is underrated when it comes to Tim Holtz products are transparent things and transparent layers. I don't know why these, I don't know how popular these are with people, but when I tell you that these things are a, another secret sauce that I think people are missing out on. <laughs> because I know a lot of times, you know, we'll go to these lives and it's like, oh, this is not coming back. And we're like, oh my God, what? Because we're not utilizing the things. But y'all, I'm telling you, these things are, they're like gems. They're so amazing. And we need to utilize them in our work because they, I think, are just, they're underrated. I don't know why. I don't see a lot of them, but I just, I think they're underrated. And I think people are missing missing out on utilizing these. So this one is transparent things. This one has like these little like winged um, images. This is a moth. Um, winged butterflies, transparent, really cool. And then these are scenes or this is like a scene. I love these. This is a scene. This one's a scene. This is like um, a little map, but I'm going to show you why I think these are underrated. But these are the new ones from this year. These, from this year. these are um, transparent layers and they come, this is this year's ideology. I don't know. I think this was, I don't know when this came out, but, um, but these, I think are the most underrated ones because these things right here, I've seen people use them, but these things can take your art piece to the next level, I believe, um, with layering. So, um, these are just like transparencies, right? Um, I wish that we could just get like a whole bunch of them, <laughs> even like just ones with just typography on it would be amazing. Just like, if we just had some of just these like words on it would just be awesome. But these are like circle and then these are like framed ones. I've used the other ones, but framed, amazing. Let me show you why I think these are awesome. So I, as I said before, I've been working on a project, um, around the idea with the theme of like portraits right and these are essentially 
um, these little, these little like portraits that I've been making with the different like products and stuff that Tim carries. And so I'm going to show you three. So this one right here, um, I use one of the layers from this pack. This is, it's right down here, this one right here. But when you layer this on top of like the portrait and there's, there's other, other layers behind it. You can see how many layers, there's like layers, right? But this just adds a different level of like, you know, interest to your piece, you know what I mean? And so when you layer this on top of the portrait or on top of something or behind something else, it just adds a different level of like interest that people are going to be like, oh, what, what is that? They're going to want to go in and see it a little bit more. And I believe that's what you're looking for when you're doing this is that how can I get more interest in my piece? Right. And so I think the layers are underrated because I don't know that people know you can like put it on top of things or, you know, tuck it behind things or like just create that different level of interest for folks. Here's another one. Um, I just put the florals behind her face or behind her like her head and it's just a different it's just a different level of like interest it's like oh what's what's going on back there more color um and i think that that is kind of the the point of it is that it's a layer right i think layering is, is your best friend that's the way to do it is to layer things and i think these are underrated because i think people are like what am i going to do with that it's just a transparent clear piece of of you know with something printed on it you can do a lot it can add a whole nother level of something for you this one's the same you know this was just done on this background was just like a scrap, just throw away, you know, um, spraying that I was doing with some inks on watercolor paper. And then I just put a layer, this transparent layer on it. And I just think it elevated it to another level because now there's interest back there. It's like, I didn't have to stamp that. It was already done for me. So I think that if you're not utilizing these like transparent layers, you're missing out because they just add so much interest to your piece. And I think it, I think they're very much underrated um, from my perspective. I think I wish more people would use them because I don't want them to go away. But I think also they're underrated because they can really add a lot to a piece that people are not necessarily, I think, thinking about. All right. So the next item that I think is underrated when it comes to Tim Holtz products are some of his stamps. OK, now I, we love all the stamps. But I think there are certain sets, stamp sets that are underrated and I think everybody should have in their studio. And those stamps specifically are the ones that have all of the little like goodies, all these little like words and numbers and yumminess, whatever. I think people don't understand like just how valuable these are, right? The, for the cost of what, what we pay for these. Um, I think the value, based on the value, I think they're underrated, 100% underrated, because these can give you so much like texture and interest in your piece, and it just adds to it. And I think that you know it, it goes, they go a long way. So like things like you know numbers or like receive stars, just all these little like elements that you can find in these pieces or in these stamp set. This is like my favorite one. This one and this one. I love these two. But um, like just little like numbers and stuff. You can add so much to your work um, that just takes it. It just adds a different another level, another layer again to kind of create more depth. Let me show you what I mean. OK, so again, when I was making the portraits, um, you can see like I had um, some of the stamps like the starts from this one just stamping on top of it. It's just like, I could have just left that blank, but even like utilizing, like you can see up here, it says like letter parcel number, whatever that is. Um, but that is from this stamp set. It's this one or this one, this stamp set, I believe. And it just adds, yeah, it's right here. It just adds something to a transportation co like just at the bottom of it. It just adds something to your, to your work. And I just think that people underestimate the power of these like little snippets, you know, like stamps, little, little snippet stamps, because they just, they add to it. And I think that if you have these, um, they can take you far. You can do backgrounds with these. You can add another layer. They're just, I think they're amazing. I think they're underrated. I think that they're underrated completely a hundred percent and the value we get from them are, um, for the price I think is amazing. So I think these, 
stamp sets specifically are underrated. My opinion. So there's that. Okay. And then the last thing for this video that I think are underrated when it comes to Tim Holtz products are ephemera, but the snippets version. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know how they got to make these like tiny things, but these, these tiny things, these little tiny things, let me turn this down so you guys can see this. The curator says ephemera pack, see that? curator and the ephemera pack snippets okay this is what this one looks like this is like one of my i this i buy these in like bulk like i buy them a lot um they're amazing and then these are just like the regular ephemera pack but they're sm their snippets are smaller i think these two things these two items can elevate your art in a way that I don't think a lot of other things can. They're like the final piece you put on something to just add that extra like, oh, like just something else to it. You know what I mean? Like a final whatever. I think people don't understand the power of these small pieces and just how much it can add to your to the piece you're working on. And so if you've not tried these, I would encourage you to just try it, right? Just try them. They just, I don't know why, but they just, they add something to them. And I use them a lot. I use these especially a lot. Like the curator set, I use them a lot. You can see here, like on this piece, um, I've used snippets up here. I've used snippets down here. So again, I could have just left this open, but just adding these two little pieces up here and adding these two little pieces down here to me just finishes the piece, right? Um, I, I don't know what it is about them, but they just they just add something to it for me. Like, I think these are just a regular ephemera, but like just little, like just little itty bitty things of whatever. It's just like amazingness. And I would encourage you, I'm trying to find the other ones. Where did I put these? Oh, they're over here. But I would just encourage you to like, like look at this one, right? Just the two little up and down. It just adds another layer to it. And I think it's just really beautiful. So in my opinion, a hundred percent underrated people don't use them enough i think that people should use them all the time it just adds something else to your work and so um they're underrated all right so again i think um these are some of the most underrated products that tim carries these are the five the first five but snippets i think are underrated some of these stamps especially these underrated hundred percent underrated backdrops a hundred percent a thousand percent underrated people are not utilizing backdrops to the, they're not maximizing their use of them the papers this distress makes media heavy stock underrated <laughs> underrated a hundred percent underrated and the transparent layers underrated so those are just my first take on the underrated products that tim carries i'm going to do another video because i have like another five things that i think people don't utilize enough and, and I think they're underrated. So, um, if you guys have any questions or comments, um, let me know what you think are underrated that Tim carries so we can have a good little chat about it. Um, in the comment section, I'm interested to see what you guys think about that. Um, are these some of the things, some of these products you use, um, that are your favorites? Let me know. Um, but I'm really curious about what you all think about my, uh, little list here of the most underrated products that Tim carries. Okay. So, Thank you all for watching and until next time, I will talk to you soon and hope you guys are living your life encouraged and I hope you make somebody's day. Talk to you soon. Bye.